You're listening to the Barn Restaurant Podcast, where hospitality lovers come to listen and learn with expert David DiLorenzo. Now here's your host, the DLO. All right, here we are with another episode of the Bar and Restaurant Podcast. I am your host, the DLO. All right. <laughs> and I have uh, some very special guests. Actually, they're all fucking special, but these guys are these guys are really special today. So I have Mark Coakley and I have Brandon Sorokman. They uh, are the owners of BKDs. So before I get into kind of your guys, you know, solo personal stories, BKDs, why? What, what, what's the an acronym for? You know and, what? We uh, we actually came up with uh, a bunch of different names that uh, I won't share because we still might use those in the future. Cool. Um, but uh, we decided to go with a, a backyard joint feel. And that was uh, what the food that we were putting out, basically a sports theme, but something that was comfort food uh, that would cater to everybody. And uh, we decided since uh, Brandon, Kelly, and Dan, which is B, AD. So um, yeah, we're all friends. <laughs> and uh, We said, let's just make an acronym of our name. And uh, we, our group is the three wise men. And uh, ironically, there was a uh, three wise men that opened up in town. And so they took our operating name as their business name. And uh, we wanted to do DB, Dan and Brandon Cooper, DB Cooper. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, there's a backstory on the location we're at. Uh, and we applied for that, and a week prior, somebody had already done DB Cooper. Um, you know, we're big fans of Kid Rock and uh, DB Cooper and the Nike yeah. store and all that stuff. So, uh, so that got scratched, and um, I said, "Well, let's do." It was perfect, Katie B's, because Katie B's like Katie B's. It sounds like like your aunt or something, and home cooking and stuff like that. Um, but uh, getting into it, we felt it was too close to Katie KB. Yeah. Radio station. Right. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> and so I, I think it was Dan that said, let's do BKDs. And uh, from then it stuck. So uh, Kelly and Dan, some backstory on them. They own the Melting Pot franchise in Arizona. Right. And uh, the three of us have been friends for probably two decades. And uh, we've always wanted to put something together. Dan and I have done some stuff in the past, um, some nightclubs and, and some other restaurants. But uh, this was the first concept for the three of us actually put what we have in and uh i couldn't ask for some better partners Uh, that's actually how i met you was through the stuff you and dan were doing back in the day and then kelly who is a dude by the way everybody um and a real dude i saw him do an ice challenge where he's in the ice water ice water for 20 (laughs) minutes yeah Yeah. that's that's our veteran connection right there because uh because of the and he's, he's running for Congress, isn't he? Yes, he yeah. is. Yes, yeah. he is. So he just came to one of my uh, seminars over at the uh, Arizona uh, Restaurant Association. Awesome. Yeah, so awesome. it was really cool to see him. All right, so in walks Mark. And uh, how how long had they had started before you came in and, you know, took over the reins? They were open for about a year when I walked in. And uh, they hired me as a chef and, and gave me ownership of the kitchen, which we started making food from scratch and changing up the menu some and get our backyard feel into it. So it's just, you know, it was a, an awesome experience to, to work here because these guys are great people and, yeah. and to be part of something that I feel I'm 100% bought into. Yeah, so, yeah. you take ownership in it. Mm-hmm. You enjoy it. You love it. You do all that. And and so my understanding, you've always you've always been in food. You started as a dishwasher when you were 17. Dishwasher. Yeah, 17, Mesa, Country, Mesa Club? Country Club. Yeah. yeah. And so how did, how did dishwashing transform into all of a sudden I'm going to Well, cook? it's just I fell in love with the food. Like I worked for a, a great chef called, his name was uh, Ken Yishimura. Mm-hmm. And he was a master chef at the time. Okay. So he, he saw how I was washing dishes. Like, hey, you have some speed, man. You should... Be my, uh, just come in and then cook for me and stuff like that. So he taught me a lot. And then I just went from there learned a lot from the guy and, and, and learned how to, um, I was in, I was in junior in high school when I started. So. Yeah. Yeah. So he taught me a lot. And then I became a cook and did banquets and weddings and, and did a massive n- number of people cooking for them. And I just fell in love with it and just went on from there. Yeah, and and are you a native to Arizona? Yep, or? I was born in Mesa, Mesa Lutheran Hospital. Oh, you haven't gone far. No, nineteen seventy. No, you literally walked to work from when you were a baby. Right? Yeah. yeah, Mesa Lutheran is like, even when I was working at the Mesa Country Club, we're like a mile down the road from Mesa Lutheran, so we did a lot of food from them. So yeah, and so give kind of the audience listening a little trajectory of some of your you know most kick ass jobs that you had before coming here. What got you to here? Well, I was a chef at Rigatoni's for thirteen years. Rigatoni's, yeah. yeah. So, 
So I went over there, opened up the location in Brown and Mesa Drive when yeah. they opened up their second location. Did he shit his pants when you left? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, what's funny is that he, he ended up closing. My his name was Michael Purser. Oh, I know Mike. Yeah, yeah, he ended up closing that location, and he decided to go with the other chef that was running the channel location. <laughs> And um, I just went on my own way and went from there to work at some some restaurants here and there. And I yeah. went to Ginger Monkey. I worked there for three years and then yeah. came here. So yeah. And then how did how did uh, Brian and Kelly Dan how did how they end up finding you? Was it like a job posting or? Well, Dan actually is friends with my uncle that does auto body. Oh. So it was a connection that way. Okay. Yeah. So you never know who you're going to meet through what or this right? and that. Yeah. You, you have family. You have a daughter, right? I have a daughter. Okay. Her name is Aliyah, and she. She's been with me for, like, she's been my sous chef and my assistant since Ginger Monkey days. So it's about six years she's been my assistant. I've been grooming her and getting her ready for the kitchen life and stuff like that. And she's, she's amazing. She does amazing cheesecake. She has her own following. Wow. She does dessert. She cooks on the line. She does it all. Where, like can, your dad. You, where can you follow her at? Like on Instagram or whatever? She, she has a uh, Twisted Cheesecakes. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. But um, she, uh, this... You could go on my Instagram and you can find her that way yeah, too. So. Yeah, no, that's great. And is that like when you go for the interview process with these guys, is that part of the deal? Like it, it's me and my daughter or nothing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, uh, that was a bonus having her yeah. come in and then uh, having her uh, her uh, bakery skills and to do the the cheesecake and the uh, devil foods. In fact, on the menu, it's uh, it's Elias devil foods chocolate cake. It's the way it's listed. But um, the unique uh, cheesecakes, um, kind of a following trend for us now. And like, what is she making this week? Um, she had made a, um, what's the chocolate balls called? The uh, Rochelle Ferrero or something. Chocolate like. salty balls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ferrero, <laughs> Ferrero yeah. yeah. And uh, before that, uh, she did Fruity Pebbles. And wow. Like, oh my gosh, people came in. It's like, it tastes like a bowl of Fruity Pebbles. You know, the <laughs> That's amazing. Cake. So um, yeah, there was definitely a, a big rush on that one. So there's been uh, a bonus. Mars. There's been um, Werther's original. Uh -huh. uh, she posted one, and they actually uh, they tagged uh, we tagged them, and they wrote back to her and, and said it was a great mm -hmm. uh, yeah. cheesecake. So anything that uh, she can take that's branded and add into that. So everyone always is waiting. What's the next one going to be? So that's cool. We just wait till she makes it. And yeah, and so. she thinks it outside the box, and she'll like, oh, that sounds like. A good cheesecake, so I'll make that one. You know what I mean? You gotta be a proud dad, huh? Oh, I'm yeah. very proud. And I have my two my two sons that worked for me too. My okay. uh, my middle child, which is twenty, he's he was my dishwasher. Okay. Yeah, and then my daughter, and then my other son, a little younger, and he he's a dishwasher also. So, well, how beautiful is that? I mean, in, in a world that we live where hospitality has almost become a bad word for some people to be like, oh my god, I can't work that hard yeah. for this amount of money or this and that. You have a whole family that's kind of following yeah. you and doing yeah, that. And my wife know? does wedding cakes and she does that's really cakes cool. on the side, and she she's an accountant, but she wants to leave her job soon and open up her own coffee place. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all in the family. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, let's uh, let's talk about Brandon for a little bit. I've known Brandon for years. Yeah, we is, have. Yeah, Brandon's life Musical, is quite uh, changed uh, <laughs> recently. All for the positive, I think. Brandon's known me during my train wreck ways, and then now into my settle down ways of you know forty something, and then some. So, so. Brandon, why the restaurant? I mean, holy shit, dude, you're on top of the world. You're the fucking music king of Arizona. Yeah. You're doing all this and, and you, you go and, and obviously you invest in this restaurant and, and you invest not just money, but your time, your blood, your sacrifice, you know, and, and, and it's like, you're also like shaking hands and rubbing elbows with, you know, Shania Twain and Guns N' Roses to you name it. Did, did it just get old after a while and you're kind of wanting to do something on your own? It, it kind of did. Um, you know, my background uh, back, like you said, is a long time ago yeah. and, and getting in the entertainment industry. I grew up um, loving uh, doing acting and uh, it evolved into doing magic. And then magic evolved. And once I moved out here into music and yeah. playing and, uh, and then quickly got bit by that stage bug. You know, when you're up there performing in front of a crowd, there's nothing like that energy and, and seeing those smiling faces and knowing that all these people have different things, you know, going on in their life. But for that one hour, they're just escaping. And to be able to produce that, of course, playing keyboards in the 80s was great. But then two guitars, Guns N' Roses, you know, other bands that came out, 
Um, I saw keyboards getting pushed aside yeah. and then someone invented the keytar and then I was out. <laughs> <laughs> <The keytar. laughs> I'm like, I'm not going up there running around with that. So thing. uncool. So, uh, so I saw the writing on the wall, went to school, learned, uh, some of the stuff behind the scenes, saw there was so much opportunity and to be able to still produce an event and didn't care to be on stage. Uh, you know, obviously being a keyboard player, I wasn't a lead singer, so it wasn't in the spotlight, but still got to see those people come and, and take that break and when they left they're like man did you see he threw me a guitar pick i got a drumstick he played that song and yeah. just the, the high of that and i would take the staff out and say look this is why we do these long hours and put up with all the stuff and outdoor and the heat and everything um but the the core of it is is the hospitality you're there to put on this event and entertain these people yeah you're not on the stage um but you're you know you're part of you know that experience mm -hmm. And, um, and then how to provide the best experience. Because as we talked about earlier, music started to kind of get stale because there hasn't been any new explosion. There's no new invention. Um, so how many times can you see Def Leppard? How many times can you see Luke Bryan? How many yeah. times? So it, it's less about seeing that same act coming every year. It's more about why are you going to go to that place this year? Mm. Um, yeah. So there was a focus on, you know, what kind of beer, what kind of food, uh, what pricing, um, how to make the lines so they were quicker, and how to how to turn that business. Um, and I'm like, well, I've invested in a bunch of different businesses before, uh, and I always said, look, I'll never do that again unless I'm <laughs> I know hands a few on. of them. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. and throwing money at something and trusting somebody is is you know all my years has never been the best way to do it. Um, it's been hands on. You know, yeah. take the responsibility. And so after 31 years and with uh, the COVID crisis and the music industry and everything. Um, there's still unsettledness in different policies today. Uh, everyone, it's really divided people. And I said, look, I want to do what I used to do, which is let's provide the hospitality, put, put the, the, the entertainment back in. Um, and not on a grand scale, but yeah. be able to do it yourself. And, and now my name's on the building. So, uh, so after 31 years, I said, well, I'm going to leave uh, and operate build this brand and uh, we're now looking at uh, second and third location. So this one is two and a half years uh, young Yeah, and, um, and it's still it's just getting started. Yeah. yeah, And it's, and it's doing great. You, you and I have a lot of similarities and obviously this isn't a podcast about me, but just in self-reflection, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I, I worked in the music business and then I got into insurance and I, I had to make insurance my own. Cause at the end of the day, nobody gives a shit about insurance. It's right. about the relationships. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you're another restaurant, but unless you have the relationships there and the hospitality you're lending out. So when I specifically did hospitality has a, has a niche, that's, what's fun for me. It's fun for me to be able to sit here and talk with you guys and all my other clients and watch them succeed and watch them be hospitable to others in the way that they do it. So exactly. what instrument did you play or play? Keyboards. Yeah. yeah. Keyboards okay. and sang. Um, you have guitars too. Da dabbled in guitar, bass, drums. Yeah. You know, I've got a full studio, studio still. So I still go out there and, and search the uh, karaoke dive bars for that singer. Nice. Because back when you used to manage bands, it would be like adult babysitting. You, know, yeah. you had to keep the drummer from sleeping with the guitar player's girlfriend and the band breaking up. Right. But in this day and age, you know, you find the talent, which is the singer, the songwriter, yeah, and uh, you can put a band behind it. And uh, I've been fortunate; I've had you know one on American Idol, one on uh, The Voice. That's cool. Um, and one's in Nashville doing good now. So um, I still enjoy doing that. Yeah, I still yeah. Really enjoy launching entertainment. Or, or That's talent. beautiful. I, I take guitar lessons now every Thursday. It's like, it's an yeah. enjoyment for me. It's a meditation. You know, we all have different things. So before we dig more into the restaurant, what are some things that you guys enjoy as far as hobbies? Let's start with you. Like besides cooking, like what else do you like to do? Well, I like to hang out with my family. Good. Me and my wife like to go on our dates, watch movies. A lot, a lot into the Netflix and all that. We just like to relax and hang out. And, yeah. And I'm a, I, I played basketball for a long time. So I like to go to the park and shoot hoops. Cool. Do my uh, get my exercise. Yeah, in, so. <laughs> good. That's always good. Yeah, and then just raising my kids and making sure that yeah. they have the best education and, and get them out there and working and stuff like that. My, my family is my hobby. So. Yeah, that's beautiful. Don't forget your fantasy league. Oh, I'm fantasy oh, we're getting heavy on the fantasy <laughs> thing. Huh? I'm, 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 I'm a big sports guy, so yeah. I, I love that. I love all Arizona teams. And I you gonna win this year? Well, I usually win two out of four. So. Okay, all right. Hey, I guess you, if you play the odds, you're going to win something, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Big Suns and Cardinals. Yeah, big so. time. Yeah. And, and Brandon, besides, you know, 
hanging out with Stacy and, and driving up north, what else do you like to do? <laughs> you know what? Like I said, uh, in the studio, I, you know, I've got a piano at home, and that's my stress reliever, you know, yeah. playing the piano and, um, and going out and finding uh, other mom and pops, you know, other cool. places and, and kind of learn what, you know, what, what makes things tick, you know, why one place does well and one place doesn't. Yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no book, as you know. I mean, so many things people think would be a success and so many things you would think sometimes would be a, a waste and, you know, they're the opposite. So not everybody knows everything. Right time, so right there's, place. There's always a lot to learn. Yeah. And and our place is, is no different. I mean, anyone can be a sports bar, you know, putting up 38 TVs and you can have the biggest HD, you know, large screen on the East Valley and you can have 24 yeah. taps. And But, you know, it's the food and, and it's, like I said, the hospitality. Um, so let's, let's talk about that because yeah. it's really important that people kind of um, understand that are listening to this, like how different and how you differentiate yourself. So you would call yourself a scratch kitchen, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk about your foods and some of the dishes that, you know, really come together that people come there for each week. And Well, everybody loves, it, loves our brisket. Like we have our smoker in the back. We barely got our smoker about eight months ago. So we've been smoking meats. It took a little bit to get everything to the point where I want it. Yeah. And we smoke our lollipops. We have a few things, that, other things that we smoke, but we have short ribs and, and, and a meatloaf. Just, you know, your home cooking stuff that you grew up on it. Yeah. You put your little twist on to make it different from a regular sports bar feel food, like fried and just wings and burgers. Yeah, and stuff. yeah. But like our Good burgers, deal. we use 70% brisket and 30% and Angus beef. So it's like we have a different kind of flavor profile, which you get to work with. So it's just, you know, bringing, bringing you know, New entrees to the table, like, you know, we have a short ribs, we have a meatloaf, we have steaks, just everything that you can think of. Like, people come in and all, man, I just don't know what to get off this menu because everything sounds good. Yeah. So it's just an excuse come for them to again. come back yeah. again and try something new. So it's like, and, and, you know, everything's like scratch made. So I have my daughter back there, Alaya, my sous chef, she's back there making sauces and, and, and making scratch made foods and. And then getting the cooks on, on board of, of being consistent on how we want to serve our plates and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, and they're pretty good, healthy portions too. So yeah, you don't leave, you don't leave hungry. No, that's good. And, and, and it sounds like you, you're able to do that because of the way that you run your kitchen and you guys run the business, keeping food costs, you know, in, in control, but also being able to provide people with, you know, something a little bit more than what you would get at a, let's just say a mundane sports bar with, you know, stale burgers and, yeah. you know, yeah. over greased fried made stuff in a fryer. Yeah, you know? exactly. You right. know, and they're just legitimately, they're just going there for the TVs at that right. point and the, and the shitty beer usually that's on tap, you know, there's, there's a format that, uh, that Dan, uh, coined the phrase is cheap and cheery. Some of those places are, you know, you get what you pay for, but yeah. you know, it's cheap and you're just going to drink and, you know, have a good time. But, yeah. um, are you, you know, it's not really an experience. You know, we wanted to have everything on there. We have, um, 10 direct TV receivers. We have four cable receivers, and the reason for that is so that we can play any game on all the packages at any time and never tell someone, sorry, we can't do that because someone's watching that game and switch it off. So we have the opportunity, and it's, we spend a lot for it. And then we do the pay-per-view UFC fights, yeah. we charge cover charges. Um, I'm, know, la so. I'm laughing because I'm at the opening and I'm watching you with that remote control, like a <laughs> <laughs> magician. That, yeah, that's it. It's one. Yeah, we, we, it's, <laughs> the technology is great. It's an app and it's just you put what TV you want and you just touch where you want it and boom. You know, gone are the days of, you know, fidgeting with, you know, 20 different remotes and stuff <laughs> so like that. So funny. But, but you can literally put anything on. Plus, we have two internet channels too. So, yeah. you know, we, we have Chive and we have our own in-house uh, advertising and untapped for all the beers. So you all do a lot of marketing. I know you guys are into marketing. I mean, you come from a background, you know, uh, Brandon comes from a background of just, you know, marketing and shows and stuff like that. And obviously you have, I mean, you're great at marketing, Mark, marketing, Mark, marketing, Mark, <laughs> marketing, Mark, marketing. There you go. Um, but I mean, this dude, like, you know, and he, he banters with me and, 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 and it's kind of funny to, you know, watch the stuff that he does on TikTok. And I think you're on LinkedIn too. Yeah. And just everything like you're, you're an active chef that's, you know, actively promoting 
your stuff because you're proud of it. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's a huge asset to an organization, you know, that you guys have there. Um, because at the end of the day, if people don't know about you or don't know what you're doing, then you're just BKDs, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, tell me a little bit about your guys' marketing strategies or what, you know, how well, important it is to you. It's, it's very important. So, um, you know, again, our history back in the day, you know, you had four or five radio stations, you had four or five TV stations, you had a, a evening and, and, a, and a morning newspaper and the New Times, and that's it. Yeah. And it was easy to advertise. Now you've got social media this, and every day there's a new thing that comes out. You've got, you know, direct TV, you got, you know, people that skip commercials, you got satellite radio. So how do you cut through? Um, and then you can't put everything in one basket because as we learned, you know, whether it's TikTok or Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook, there's a demo that follows that too. And so you've got to be able to get involved with everybody. Mark does really good on his social media uh, with his chefs and the people that follow him. Yeah, um, That goes viral. Uh, we do a lot of stuff on the B on BKD's uh, social sites and, and then share that so that it goes viral. Um, you know, we have uh, a company called Local 480 that helps us with a lot of promotions and stuff on, on the social media uh, platform. Um, and it's key. I mean, you got to spend a lot because if you look at the studies that are done, you know, if you spend, you know, $10,000 and you finally get somebody <clears throat> to come in and to try your place, yeah. that wasn't word of mouth. That was through your efforts. Uh, even if they have 100% um, experience and it's great, there's only a 46% chance of them coming. And then if they come back yeah. a second time and they have a killer experience again, there's only a 48% chance of them returning. And then if you finally get them to come for a third time, yeah. there's a 72 to 75% chance that they're going to come back and now you've got a regular. So uh, it takes a lot of work because, as you know, that one mistake can cost you so much. Uh, it, it takes, you know, 10 experiences to make up for you know, one bad one. Yeah. So, again, once they walk through the door um, – Know, we don't charge for pool. You can play pool. We don't charge for the, the viewing. If they want to see something, you know, we put it up. It's not like, oh, no, we're putting stickers up here. And when NFL oh, plays, yeah, yeah. you got to yeah. sit what where your nightmare. team is. It's like, no, get there. And we have enough viewing, enough TVs yeah. to, to make it so, you, you know, whatever you want, you get there. So, um, so what are some of the events that you – obviously, you said pool. You have the UFC fights. You have any and all sports. Are there other events that you do there? Is there, like, yoga? We do. Or you know, we've done, uh, we've done some uh, workouts in our patio. The nice thing is we're split 100 inside, 100 outside. Yeah. Our, dog, our patio is dog-friendly. Cool. So you have that. Um, we're working on morphing that into some other things. It's, it's somewhat climate-controlled in the summer with misters and swamp coolers. We have heaters in the wintertime, which, of course, in winter, it's gorgeous to be outside. Yeah looking forward to that season um so we've had some um uh, hit fitness uh, out there doing stuff on the patio we've had some off-road groups that have come in and done some events uh we recently uh were, we had a sweet 16 party there uh in one evening the <laughs> next morning we had 40 people for a baby shower it's amazing we just had a 30 year old class reunion uh next saturday coming up we have the ufc fight inside and we have a wedding reception 100 people um, 110 people yeah. outside <laughs> during the fight. Um, so we really make sure, look, we don't turn anybody away. We'll, we'll do whatever yeah. we can. We're not trying to be everything. Yeah. Uh, we're just trying to cater to the people. We're, we're in a location uh, there uh, at, at Pecos off of McQueen, um, 980 East Pecos Road, Suite 5, by the way. Okay. Um, and there's no anchor in that center. There used to be, I think it was a bash mm -hmm. years ago. Oh, wow. Um, so we don't have the natural foot traffic, but we don't have also the competition of a bunch of places around us. Yeah. We are a neighborhood joint. You're the and, place. And people, there, a lot of our people, our regulars walk there and walk home. Well, I, also, I also heard because of his cooking, a lot of people drive, well, not a lot, but people drive from yeah. Sun City to come have a meal. Oh, yeah. We've yeah. had people come from Sun City and Peoria. It's great. Some chefs, yeah. like barbecue chefs and. They just were like, oh, man, I see your post on Facebook. i got to come try your food. And, and they, yeah. they don't leave disappointed. They actually come back the week after, bring their family. Or it's just, it's, I have like a little studio in the back where I have my, my, my lights, my phone, my cameras, everything. And I just make my own little setup where I take Perfect. pictures of my food. So oh, That's great. Yeah, the nice thing is when, when Mark came on uh, a little over a year ago, um, you know, we gave him full control of the kitchen. We said, this is what we want to do. You know, take it to the next level. Yeah. And the nice thing uh, with having your own place and having Mark is, is 
we would do specials, a daily special. Yeah. And Meatloaf Monday was a special. It was, it was a brisket meatloaf. And people were like, wow, I can only get this on a Monday. And so we started going, wow, there's an idea. Let's launch these daily concepts. And if they win, they'll become permanent on the on the menu. Perfect. And so we've done that with so many things. There's some stuff like our, our prime rib is on Sundays and our fish fry on Fridays. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we launch stuff on a daily special. And if it takes off, it, it gets the menu. That's cool. And wow. So that's, that's a you got to be hungry listening to the podcast. Um, <laughs> all right. So last thing about BKDs before we get into some fun questions here is what what is the future and how the hell are you going to do more locations when there's only one mark? Well, you know what? He's designed the recipes. Uh, he's uh, got a bunch of kids, and his kids are working in the kitchen. <laughs> the nice thing about when you clone a him, family in the kitchen is you get consistency. Yeah, and uh, and so uh, we're waiting for his kids to have kids, so we have another generation <laughs> of Coakleys to uh, run in the kitchen. Um, that's what the S stands for. Several others, and so that's his family. That's in the BKS. Several. Others. Very creative. <laughs> Look at that, folks. Oh my god. Um, so having having those recipes and him training his kitchen staff to keep consistent, and then the analytics that we're doing uh, from all our social marketing, uh, I pulled some this morning, and it's interesting because we keep looking at where we're going to place the next location. Yeah. We're, we're looking at Northwest Valley. Um, one of the reasons is our format, again, is it's a neighborhood joint, so yeah. we're not looking for a place that's competing with a bunch of other stuff. We're looking for the residential concentration and something that we can go in and become part of the neighborhood. You know, yeah. we're, we're not necessarily a destination. We're a local, uh, you know, place that takes care of, of the uh, neighborhood. Uh, uh, I had two businesses, which I still do, um, but one is in a heavily populated area, and one is in uh, downtown Scottsdale. And it's interesting the the other one is consistent all year because it's a neighborhood joint. And Scottsdale, as we know, it has its peak in the fall and in the summertime. You know, you can throw a rock and not hit anybody. Yeah. Um, so you make a lot, and then you got to save and go through that. So to find a place that's like, like we have now, BKDs, it's consistent. Um, there's some Northwest Valley areas that are underserved by commercial right now. Right. Um, so we're looking at that, and then um, it's interesting because we have a big spike right now in um, on the internet standpoint um, or status uh, from LA. A lot of people from L.A. for some reason are searching us out. So I don't know if they're moving out here and we're showing up big. They're moving um, out here. Trust me. But yeah, I know they're definitely moving here because that's why I sold my house and can't buy a new house because yeah. the L.A. people. You did are, sell your house out there. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I wish Dan would have listened to me, you know, years ago when I was like, dude, 32nd Street and Shea and then Zips yeah. snags that location right, right. and they're crushing it. I'm like, I don't exactly. want Zips over here. I want a BKD. Right, Come right. On. Exactly. So anyways. So we're looking for that. Um, we, we are poised right now to do a second location. Um, we're actively uh, looking for that and, uh, and then possibly a third. Uh, and maybe further north, like Prescott. Yeah. Area. Very or cool. Mm -hmm. oh, I love so. it. I love it. All right. Well, this is awesome. Um, so I got some questions for you guys. There's no right or wrong answers to these. All right. We're just going to have some fun. You can yeah. both answer. None right. of you can answer. Whatever. Uh, do you prefer the snow or the heat? Heat. Snow. A road trip or a European vacation? Road trip. Yeah, road trip. Okay. Where would you go? Road trip, like what do you just up north? Washington. Washington. Yeah. Right there. Drive through California. Yeah. Washington. There you That's go. Be a fun road trip, especially driving by the beach all the way up there. That'd Very cool. Fun. I'd go anywhere. Anywhere? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just I'm not a homebody. I'm never home. See, I am a homebody. Yeah. That's only funny. time I'm home is the sleep, <clears throat> so I'm constantly at home. Yeah. That's so funny. We're all different. Um, would you rather swim a mile or run six miles? Run six miles. Swim. Swim a mile. Okay. I like the water. Eat three small meals a day or just eat one big meal? One big meal as a chef. You, you're wearing food all day. So when I get home, that's my meal. Okay. Yeah, that's torn. Because <laughs> I do both. This is the most ridiculous question. <laughs> I, I, I eat one meal, and then, uh, you know, my, my brother got me turned on to intermittent fasting. Yeah. Um, but then uh, Stacy and I went out recently to uh, a place that was, you know, they served one bite meals. Yeah. And it was an interesting experience to just eat one bite of something. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, I so I, you know, I do both. <laughs> uh, what What's real, Megalodon or Bigfoot? Bigfoot. I think they're both real. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's whatever you want to believe. I, I do too. Uh, CDs or live music? CDs. 
you know, I got to say live music, you know that, but you got to have that CD so that you can relive that, that yeah. experience over and over again. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because that, that, that recording, um, you know, it hits you, but you know, some of those recordings, because you saw it live, you want to relive it. Well, and that, how it brings you back to certain parts of your life and your childhood. I was reading through the Van Halen time magazine thing and I read the whole thing this weekend. And, you know, then I hear like the people's like sayings of the certain songs. So I put on my, you know, my, mm-hmm. my earphones and I just dove deep. Like I was a child again, listening yeah. to fair warning or 1984. It's crazy. But yeah, that's, I love it. Um, snorkeling or hang gliding. Snorkeling. Wow. Well, both for me. Yeah. Crazy. All right. Craziest show you've ever been a part of. <laughs> 98 KUPD <laughs> presents. <laughs> and Mark, what's the wildest dish you've ever created? Mm. Probably. Um, probably working with Jack, jackfruit or, or prickly pear. Yeah. Made some some good tacos. Actually, were pretty good. Actually, were on the menu for a little while. But yeah, that's my cool. wildest stuff I used. Jackfruit and prickly pear. Awesome. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. This yeah, was fun. Thanks for having yeah. Me. Where fun. where can everybody find uh, BKDs? Uh, obviously, you gave the address out yeah, already. Yeah, nine eighty so, East uh, Pecos um, Road. You guys are on McQueen. Instagram, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes, Instagram, yes. Facebook. BKDs Backyard dot uh, com is website. Because BKDs Backyard Joint would be a little too long. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's BKD's backyard. You'll find a lot of stuff and BKDS uh, hashtag on uh, all the social sites, Instagram and stuff. You can find a lot of our, our things under that. Very cool. Thank you everybody for listening. And uh, we appreciate um, if you would give us a five star because these guys are so cool. Not for me, but give them the five star. So it helps the podcast. And uh, this po- podcast is sponsored by myself bar and restaurant insurance so anyways i'm here for all your insurance needs and whatever else you need but uh this was a fun one so thank you and until next time peace out